Laugh with the Lord. Virtue has always spent its time eliminating whatever it found bad in life. And if all the virtues of the various countries of the world had been put together, very few things would remain in, ex would remain in existence. Virtue claims to seek perfection, but perfection is a totality. So the two movements contradict each other. A virtue that eliminates, reduces, fixes limits, and a perfection that accepts everything, rejects nothing, but puts each thing in its place, obviously cannot agree. Taking life seriously generally consists of two movements. The first one is to give importance to things that probably have none, and the second is to want life to be reduced to a certain number of qualities that are considered pure and worthy of existence. In some people, this virtue becomes dry, arid, gray, aggressive, and it finds fault everywhere, in everything that is joyful and free and happy. The only way to make life perfect, I mean, here, life on earth, of course, is to look at it from a hot is to look at it from high enough to see it as a whole, not only in its present totality, but in the whole of the past, present, and future, what it has been, what it is, and what it will be. One must be able to see everything at once, because that is the only way to put everything in its place. Nothing can be eliminated, nothing should be eliminated, but each thing must be put in uh but each thing must be in its place in total harmony with all the rest. And then all these things that seem so bad, so reprehensible, so unacceptable to the Puritan mind would become movements of delight and freedom in a totally divine life. And then nothing would prevent us from knowing, understanding, feeling and living this wonderful laughter of the Supreme who takes infinite delight in watching himself live infinitely. This delight, this wonderful laughter that dissolves every shadow, every pain, every suffering. You only have to go deep enough within yourself to find the inner sun, to let yourself be flooded by it. And then there is nothing but a cascade of harmonious, luminous, sunlit laughter, which leaves no room for any shadow or pain. And this sun, this sun of divine laughter, is at the center of all things, the truth of all things. We must learn to see it, to feel it, to live it. And for that, let us avoid people who take life seriously. They are very boring people. As soon as the atmosphere becomes grave, you can be sure that something is wrong, that there is a troubling influence, an old habit trying to reassert itself, which should not be accepted. All this regret, all this remorse, the feeling of being unworthy, of being at fault, and then one step further and you have the sense of sin. Oh, to me it all seems to belong to another age, an age of darkness. But everything that persists, that tries to cling and endure, all these prohibitions and this habit of cutting life into two, into small things and big things, the sacred and the profane? What, say the people who profess to follow a spiritual life, how can you make such little things, such insignificant things, the object of spiritual existence? And yet, this is an experience that becomes more and more concrete and real, even materially. It's not that there are some things where the Lord is, and some things where He is not. The Lord is always there. He takes nothing seriously. Everything amuses him, and he plays with you, if you know how to play. If you do not know how to play, oh, you do not know how to play. People do not know how to play. But how well he knows how to play, how well he plays, with everything, with the smallest things. You have some things to put on the table. Don't feel that you think, don't feel that you have to think and arrange. No, let's play. Let's put this one here, and that one there, and this one like that. And then, another time, it's different again. What a good game, and such fun. So it is agreed. We shall try to learn how to laugh with the Lord. From the mother, 
on thoughts and aphorisms.